Hi, this is Gail and welcome. So today I thought I would share with you some little bottle tags of, that I made out of acetate. Um, and uh, these are according to uh, Eva from Bohemian Crafting. I watched a video from her and um, she did a tutorial on how she made them and then I set out to do the same. Now I will tell you that what I used was this these craft plastic sheets that I got from Amazon and they're nice and sturdy it says 0.18 millimeters 0 0.007 inches thick works with die cutting machines and indeed it does I used my big shot and sorry for the reach this is the die it's a Tim Holtz Sizzix Biggs 664408 it's wonderful you get the four size for sizes of the tags. If you've never seen one of these, these are the bigs, and you can see how thick they are. They don't work in just any machine. They work in the big shots, and if you have an electric machine, you have to make sure that it will take this thickness. Uh, mine does not, and so I'm glad I kept my big shot and even though it has a few issues it still works so this is the die and also I've utilized as did Eva alcohol inks okay so you don't need a lot for sure but you need some alcohol inks and what I used, what it looked like she used, she probably used Yupo, and I know I have some somewhere, but I have this uh, photograph paper, and I have tons of it. Someone gave me a bunch of it, and so I just used that. It's a slippery surface, so easy to move the ink around on it, and I used this instead of one of the tools with a sponge or the ones that are rectangular. I can't find my rectangular ones, but this worked just fine. I have a bunch of them somewhere, but I just used this one. These actually came from the hospital when my husband was in ICU, so they use them to clean the patient's mouths and such. So, anyhow, that's where that came from. And if you have any alcohol, I had some 70% alcohol, or if you have alcohol uh, fixative or a mixative or a blending solution, that helps to spread out that ink and make it go further. So those are all things that for this you can utilize. So you cut out the plastic, you use your alcohol inks to colorize it, and then you stamp it. Now, I used my Ranger Archival inks, and I used two colors on these. And the blue is this manganese blue. And you can see that on here. Let me bring it up. It's probably easier to see it down below, I'm guessing. So that's the manganese blue. And then, of course, the jet black. All right, so those were the inks that I used. Now, Eva did not use inks. And I will say we had to, like, I uh, did these with my friend Lori. We had to wait overnight for ours to dry. She used, I think, stays on an um, I'm not positive, but whatever she used, it didn't, it didn't dry, but she got a really interesting effect when she wiped it off. She had the ghost of the stamp on there. 
So, like, there was no color wherever there had been stamping. So that was a really cool effect, too. Okay, so anyhow, mine did dry, but the blue I still feel like isn't real steady. But that's okay, because really, and the part I didn't get the first time through, is that that isn't really the main decoration. That is your substrate on which you pretty much kind of put cluster on top of it, okay, as you see here. But I liked the stamping so much that I made it my highlight, pretty much. Now, the other thing I used were some... These are little stickers. They're foil crystal borders. And I have had these, like, they were two for a dollar. I know I have had those probably 15 years, so... Yeah, don't know that you can find those anywhere, but these I just got at the dollar store, and these are rub-ons, and I did use these, as you can see, quite a bit. Unfortunately, this was the only one available at my dollar store. I went to another one. They didn't have any, so I do have more I can hit up in town, and I will, but enough talk. The other thing you do is, as you see the white here, and you use, after all your alcohol inks are dry, this is Antique Linen Distress Paint, which you simply daub onto a stamp and then stamp it on. But I did learn some things about that, too. You don't want a whole lot of liquid, just enough to lightly cover. And you don't want to hold it on or smush it at all because it becomes unclear. Now you'll notice here's one of the rub-ons here and this is that sticker. I punched teensy tiny. It's a 1 8 inch hole and I did use distressed inks around the outer edge although I have to say you really can't tell. I used uh, vintage photo. Now here's the black. These were sort of a blue and a purple combo and you can see the stickers and such but I think on the white you can almost see them better here again this one there's the white or the antique linen and didn't do a lot with that one I just felt like the stamping was enough this one it's mostly stamping with a little rub on liked that little dot how that turned out on there don't know how but it did um, this one I did use those stickers in purple up the side, but again, it's got the white and the black stamping. And this one, too, it's strictly the stamping, um, and yeah, I felt like that spoke enough. These, I, I watched the video that Eva did again, and I realized, okay, basically, the acetate is the substrate, it's the background, and then you build on top of that. So this one, this is a little number stamp, cutesy little photo, another number stamp, and the rub-on. And over here, pretty much the same thing, only I used one of the lavender stickers there. So, and this is like, it was a two-ply raffia, so I untwisted it and used one ply in each. I really didn't want to use a huge hole in these because, and you can see it's quite tiny, but I didn't want to go much bigger than that because I really was afraid it would put a lot of stress on the acetate. So that's that. So I thought I could work through doing some with you. So I'm going to set that off to the side. And I have some in stages. Okay. So these I started and yeah. And I picked some things out for them. These are further along. These two. Because these instead of using the ink which Eva did not use ink. She used just distress paints, and she used antique linen and espresso. 
and I don't have espresso. I had instead gathered twigs was the darkest I had. So I used that. Now, obviously, if you have espresso, go for it. But I will show you over here. This one, I've only done the white stamping. And I think you can see that. And this, these bottles are basically green and then butterscotch. I didn't have caramel. I, Eva uses caramel. Um, but I didn't have that, so I used the closest to it, which was butterscotch. And so now I have to do some brown with the gathered twigs on that one. And then this one as well. I've already done stamping with the antique linen, and that is part of a bingo card, and I think there's a clock attached, and then some lettering, okay? So these are a little further along. These have the white and the brown stamping done. So you can see those, and this one as well. So these are some Ranger Tim Holtz stamps and use those and then I have picked out a couple of little pictures to go on them. So I thought to start with I will show you the alcohol ink process just in case you're not familiar with them. I don't have a ton of colors in alcohol inks, but I have enough, and I highly recommend wearing gloves because this is a messy process. Um, I will say, though, I did get, it was something that I found, um, and I thought it was put out by Tim Holtz. I think it's called Orange, but it's a soap with kind of a rough scrubber almost like a like a dried sponge on one side that stuff works like a charm it gets off alcohol inks and dyes like nobody's business so I always have that handy because yeah I'm gonna make a mess now here are my little die cut bottles and I can tell you that I have lost two of these one was alcohol inked. I have no idea where it went, but they're so small. And, you know, the coloring is such that once you drop them, you can't find them. So I've lost two of those already. I'm just going to do one set here. And this time, I thought I would do the um, purples and such and you know if you have the blending solution that's really the best thing to do but I don't so there we go and I have a purple I have an aqua yeah and what's this no, I thought I had a periwinkle. I think I do. Cool peri. Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to get these ready, and then we just have some fun and blend. That's all there is to it. And also, good ventilation. Good ventilation. Okay, I'm going to pour, pour. Four. And I gotta watch because mine runs. Okay, I'm gonna dip into this alcohol ink. Gonna be cautious and I'm gonna dab it on. I 
think I got mostly a grape on here. But that's okay. When it dries, I can add on another layer. And that will be fine. Now this one got less of that, so we'll just put a little bit on, huh? Okay, so I'm going to let the grape kind of dry. And after the purple colors are dried, then I'll go back in and add a little bit of the green just to give it a little pizzazz you know okay gonna move this over here so it's out of the really fluid area if I can which it's there here we go. Down here. Trying not to touch it too much. Move that down here. There. Okay. We'll let that dry. Alcohol ink dries pretty fast. As you probably know, those of you who play with this stuff probably know all of that. I am not a pro by any means, but I do like having fun with it for sure. So, these I just think have a lot of possibilities. And I'm doing a farm journal, and so I'm gathering ideas in my head of what else I can do with these. I think I can kind of make them look like milk bottles or, you know, how on the farm there are always all of these liniments that you use, you know, rubbing liniments for this and that and the other thing for the horses and for the critters. So I thought, hmm, we can make, see what we can make using those. So I think that will be pretty cool. <laughs> So, let's see if I can get some of this off of here. And I think I'm going to have a pretty neat substrate to use as sort of a master board and cut up later on. What do you think? Pretty cool, huh? So, I'm just going to keep on keeping on and get some color on it. I'm trying to get the color off of my little sponge here. But it is definitely saturated. Well, and the other thing I thought about, too, is I can add charms. Don't have to use raffia. You could use, it is a pretty tiny hole, but I think embroidery floss would work fine through there. A tiny little silk ribbon. Yeah, lots of things will work. So, okay, I think we're good now. We're pretty close to it. I'm going to put some more alcohol on this. going to squirt out some green. And real quick, dab, dab, dab. Some green. Doesn't have to go. Look at that. Is that gone already? Yeah. It, like, absorbs so quickly. Okay, and you can see it reactivating. Maybe. Let's try that. Let's see what happens with that. Ooh, it's blue. It's blooming on there. Ooh, kind of like that effect. Yeah, that's a neat effect. Let's bloom it here then. Come on. I hope you can see that blooming effect. That is way cool. Okay, so you can see that that is doing a neat little blooming effect on there. 
and that's leaving kind of a different thing going on but I like that so I am going to leave it I'm gonna do it down here too do the bottom and the top and let's see well, that is really cool like that too so we're just playing okay so when those dry then I can go through and I can put the distress paint on them but I will tell you it does take a while so it's not going to be anytime soon um, yeah. but I am going to try to put these off to the side somewhere so that we can move on and I can show you the stamping and then at a later point I'll come back and show you these okay so let's see where I can put these okay I'm gonna switch spots I'm gonna bring these down here and I'm gonna put these up here okay now alrighty so I can do stamping here so let me find my gathered twigs let's use this one I used this one on these two but I think it might be fun to use this one on those so here's my gathered twigs I'm gonna shake it up I don't hear that ball moving around in there okay so there we go it finally is coming out it takes it a while I noticed okay and there there that almost there okay that's it on those I'm not gonna put a lot more okay and I'm gonna use a baby wipe because you really want to clean thoroughly to get the paint off Okay, so, and you notice I didn't do the whole stamp because I didn't need the whole area. I just needed that little bit. Okay, here we go. Okay, so got that all cleaned off and ready to go for whatever I do next. Okay, so those two I can't touch yet, but these two I can. And I found this that I thought looked cute on there, and I want to distress it first. So bunch more bottles here. I'm going to move those there. I'm going to get this and change this back here to this. Okay. And I am using Vintage Photo. Okay, so Okay You 
you know, I'm putting the distressing on here, but with it being acetate, it probably just slides off with contact, but it's okay. And I'm going to go ahead and do this one while I'm at it, too. So these have both the white and or the antique linen and the distressed, um, what is that called? Gathered twigs. So gathered tree, twigs and antique linen are on both of those. Oops, and let me do this. So you see the process. Okay, ta-da. Now, I'm just going to glue those on, and I am going to use my, I can't remember if this is art glitter glue or if this is barely art glue. I prefer the barely art glue now, but I'm... I'm not sure if that's what's in here or not. Because I had a couple of these that still had art glitter glue in them. So, there we go. And I really want part of that clock to show. So, I thought I'd try to pretty much center it. That's my main focal point. Relax and the cute little girl. I just think that's adorable. Cute. Okay. And then this one. And then I'll see what else I want to add to it. So this one, I don't think it really matters what I cover or don't. I kind of like it right about there. Now I did experiment with putting the picture behind, but the stamping pretty much obliterates a lot of being able to tell what it is. So. Yeah, not going to do that. Okay, so now I do have right here some little numbers. So I could put something like that down there or up here. Or like this. That looks like it's six o'clock on that clock. We could put a six down here or right about here. That might be kind of fun. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Okay, and there, there's that. Okay. And 
this one says smile. I think that's what that is. And then I don't know. Do we want to put a crooked number? Because that kind of makes you laugh. Do we want to put it over here? No. And I don't want to cover up that little clock. I like it. So, where's that? I think we put the crooked 78 down there. Because that makes me smile. Okay. We go. Okay, <clears throat> that's there now. I think that's enough with the numbers. I'm going to shut that for now. Spill it. And let's see. Might use something here. And definitely thinking of these, if I can get them out of here. Okay, so first, let's see, this is about the right size when it's up around the neck of the bottle. Do we want to put something like that there? Okay, where's the little hole? If I do that, I have to watch and not cover up the hole or repunch it. my little scissors. Hmm. No, I don't see my little scissors. They're usually right here. Did I put them away? these. It will work. There. I like that. And let's see. Oopsie. Broke free, didn't it? For this one, that's probably enough. 
That's what I'm thinking. And I did poke right through that hole. So I've got to re-poke that. And I don't know if I can even see where it's at anymore. Well, if I can't, then I just do another one. See, you can see this is what the back looks like. So, I suppose if I use like a vellum or photos on acetate, I could do some interesting things too. But, okay, so there's my hole again. And where's my raffia? go Well, that's why it's more than one. That makes sense. I thought it seemed awfully thick. Okay. You can see I'm just unwinding that to get enough to make a cutesy little bow. Cut that off. Go ahead, make a bow. Okay, so I'm sure this is a lot of fun to watch. Okay. that one just adorable okay and finish one more and I'm kind of wondering maybe something there would be cute hmm. I feel like Maybe this is the right size. Don't want it too big. Okay, let's see. Yep. We'll do that now. <sighs> well, <laughs> oh, here I can use this. So it's a rub on. Usually have a popsicle stick here. Don't know where it's gotten to, but doesn't really matter. 
because this should have the same effect. Let's see if it did. Yep, there you go. And you can see there we have it and <clears throat> Do the raffia, and then we'll have two done. Oh, I see. Part of the problem is the hole has been covered up a bit by that sticker. So, there we go. Okay. Alrighty. Okay. There you have it. <laughs> the little hanger. It would be cute. Next one, I think I'll put some charms on to dangle as well. So, there you have two more completed and more to go. So, if you get a chance, stop over, check out Eva's tutorial. And her tags, they're awesome. And um, next time you stop in, I will have more done that I can show you. And they are just the most versatile little tags and so precious. So, thanks for watching. Find your joy. Focus on that joy. Get out there and make some art. Create something fun. And stay safe and stay healthy. Until next time, bye-bye.